Good morning, everybody. I'm here with trainer Mary Pattershaw. Mary, tell us a little bit about how you got into the horse racing business and how long you've been in. Okay, I came to Parks Racetrack uh, 35 years ago almost. Um, wow. I was working in the Department of Recreation and I met a lifeguard and I asked him what he did when he wasn't a lifeguard. He said he worked at the racetrack and that was the end of that. <laughs> he brought me up and my first job was with Glen Hill. Oh, my goodness. So, um, right now we understand things are tough with no racing and tell us a little bit about the things that you've had to do to keep it afloat, not only at the barn, but in your personal life as well. Well, I have the shipping business for horses yeah. and that's been pretty much uh, shut down as far as the races go because that's my forte, mm -hmm. shipping horses to races and back because I know races. So I had to take outside hauls, crazy hauls where I've had to go from New Jersey to Tennessee. Wow, Tennessee. how far was that? Oh, so that was um, 11 hours. Wow. To drop a horse off, I stayed overnight there. Uh -huh. uh, had to go up to Tennessee to pick up three year, uh, to Kentucky. To pick wow. Up three year lane, which was about four and a half hours. Uh, because I had them on the trailer, I drove straight to Maryland to drop off two right near Ocean City, Maryland. Wow. And then drove to drop the last one off to New Jersey. Uh, normally I would take a second driver to share the ride, but because of the money situation, I couldn't afford to pay one because I needed to pay my bills and feed my horses. Yeah, yeah, so of course. So I did it myself and uh, I was pretty tired and when, when I got home, I, bet. I slept the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Now, um, there are a lot of tracks out there that are running under the new CDC guidelines and they're running successfully. Do you feel like we could do that here at Parks? Yes, absolutely. I feel that we could take the necessary precautions. Mm -hmm. um, I think we do now anyway. Yeah. I think everybody's abiding by them, the social distancing, the disinfecting, uh, just being careful. Of course. And you can see I got my mask <laughs> <laughs> um, and I hate it. But yeah. I use it. Um, of course. I don't see any reason, and my contention is the same people that are working on the backside would also be working at the front side, so you're not bringing in anybody. Any new, not, any new not people. Not one person I could think of that would be new. Exactly. Well, Mary, in closing, we would love to get your story out there and to the people that need to see it on our social media platforms. Is there anything you would like to add or express to Governor Wolf? Yes, I live in Philadelphia. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. I moved to New Jersey for 20 years, but I'm back now. I do not miss an election. I am well informed and I vote. Good. I will absolutely vote and things need to be opened up. We can't shut down the whole economy. And unfortunately, our economy, we not only have ourselves to support, but we also have to support our animals. Yeah. There's no money coming in right now. I have my blacksmith here. Mm -hmm. He has to be paid for a horse that has no shot at making any money with it. He hasn't and won't in the next 30 days according to what's being said. Yeah. So, um, you know, we need help. I did apply for the EIDL. I got nothing back so far. No correspondence or anything. I qualified for it. But, um, I, I don't know what's going on and without money coming in, I, it's yeah. going not, not yeah, well it's, at all. It's definitely it's stressful. Very worrisome. Well, Mary, we hope that everybody stays safe and healthy and we hope to see your horses racing again. Me too. Thank, Thank you. you.